Torrent.com. Torrents. Lightning fast and lightning. One of the things I don't want you to know uh, is is this whole power of the of the masculine and the feminine working working together. Right. When you get when you get to the uh, to the New Testament and it explains to you why the man is the head of the woman, it starts to make more sense. Okay. Well, explain that because it is. I'll be honest with you, and it's not offensive to me. I just think it's kind of an oxymoron mm-hmm. because most men think with their penis and not their brain. Uh, you know, I mean, not all men, but a majority. And so even in, in business and other things, the the ego has gone straight into the head of their penis. And so it's weird, you know, so so describe more in detail what that means. All right. Well, here we go. First Corinthians chapter 11. All right. And I'm going to be reading from the King James. It says, uh, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. This is not talking about clothing. Okay? It just defined for you, having your head covered means having someone or an authority, don't take that word the wrong way, above you. Okay? You are the head of your children. You are the covering of your children. This has nothing to do with burkas. Okay? This is, when it talks about praying with your head covered, it ain't talking about covering your damn face up. All right? Now, that practice may be a physical representation of the principle, that, but it's right. not the principle the Bible's talking about. Okay. But see, that's where I think a lot of things get perverted, or I mean, that's just for lack of a better word, in exactly the way you're getting ready to describe. So go ahead. Sorry. All right. So uh, verse 15 says, but or verse 5, excuse me, says, but every woman prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For there, that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. But the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Right? Now, so, okay, go ahead. Sorry. It's the reason that a woman needs to have a covering or a protector, a spiritual protector, which is what it's talking about here in context. Okay. So it's not the, it, it's, okay, okay, that makes more sense. Okay, go ahead. That makes more sense. Okay. Who, who, who protected Christ? God. Therefore, God is the covering or head of Christ. Okay. As a man, okay, who is the covering or protector? Christ. Okay. Now, who protects the woman? The man. This is a hierarchy, and it tells you the reason why the woman needs that protector. The angels. The angels. Well, what does that mean? Well, look, dude, guys, go pick up my novel, Then Came the Flood. Not because, you know, one, it's a good read, but two, this is one of the reasons that, that all this is done. When you go back to the Old Testament, you find out that there was a group of angels that felt that became enamored with human women, and they left their first estate. They left heaven, okay, the heavens, for the love of human women, and they cohabitated with these women. Some they just took, which would infer by force, but not all of them. And when these angels did, they created a hybrid race. Angels with the power to teleport, to fly, to to go anywhere at the speed of thought, to manifest matter in all sorts of different ways, created children with human women. And in the Bible, they're called the Nephilim or the Nephilim. Those who are earthborn, born of earth. Oh, 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 right? oh. This is Bible. This is what's in the book of Genesis, okay? Holy now, shit, shit. Now, oh. the book of Enoch, which is what my, my novel is heavily based off of, 
tells you that this was an aberration because now you have Homo sapiens sort of being born with superhuman powers. And so some of them came out as giants, 33 feet tall or more. Some of them come out like uh, Hercules with superhuman strength, but they look very human. Some came out with a half goat, half man. You get your centaurs, your mentors. You get all of these half demigods is what, what others would call them. And then you wonder, okay, well, let's see. What is the book of Enoch? It says that these angels came down on Mount Hermon and ruled from the mountain. Sounds like Olympus to me. And you can't go to any any uh, Greek and Roman uh, uh, mythology without seeing the gods slinging sperm everywhere. 